Okay, Erev Tov, good evening everyone. I want to thank the Medina's family, I want to uh, say baracha, special baracha for all the participants, those who are sitting here around the table, and those who watch us on Facebook, God bless you with all the barachot in the Torah. Amen. We have abundance of uh, health and, and, and parnasa, uh, uh, livelihood, and uh, a lot of uh, simcha, joy in your life. Amen. Thank you, Yura. Amen, amen. Toda rabba. Toda rabba. So, <clears throat> what I wanted to uh, what I wanted to talk today is something that is very common on Shabbat. Halacha called gozez, which means she- uh, shearing. How is that to do? Have to do anything with Shabbat? I'll give an example. Uh, there's a question: if one can uh, cut uh, trim his hair or fingernails on Shabbat, uh, if he can do it with his teeth, with a kli, with special tool. What about uh, just cutting hair, like let's say they have a bandage and you want to remove it. By removing it, will take off also some hair. Is that forbidden or, per, or, or permitted on Shabbat? Um, you'd be surprised, there's some halachot here today that will be a little bit funny, but it's a halacha we have to learn. And there was a question the other day, someone said, listen, I'm blowing my nose. Sometimes I have a very dry mucus. And when I blow my nose, I have, I don't want to discuss you, but you know, <laughs> part of the process, when you pull it out, sometimes I pull hairs and it bleeds. What should I do on Shabbat? Let's say I can help it. I don't have to do it. Can, should I do it? Should I do it softly? Should I don't care about that just because I have to blow my nose? Just do it. What's the problem? Can one cut his uh, skin on Shabbat, make scratches, or any day? Any day it's, it's, it's prohibited. Your body belongs to Hashem, and you are damaging it. So on Shabbat, it's even worse when you uh, make <coughs> your bloodshed. Um, this is forbidden. That's why you, have to, you can't treat your teeth on Shabbat. You have to be careful. Um, and so forth and so on. So this is a melacha, one of the melachot, the type of work that are forbidden on Shabbat. Don't be mistaken by thinking that uh, well, it's not really a work. Only work, work is prohibited on Shabbat. This is a very big mistake. It's a very common mistake. You can work very hard and sweat and do no sin but a mitzvah. For example, there is a seuda, a special meal or a meal or whatever. On Shabbat, you're bringing from uh, the second floor, the third floor, tables and chairs, and you bring, I don't know, from a storage, a hundred pieces in order to help for a meal for Shabbat, for the sake of Shabbat. And you sweat. It's a mitzvah. It's not even a sin. But flicking a switch on Shabbat, you committed a sin, a grave sin. You break Shabbat. Why? Because melacha means to complete something. So uh, when you do that, flicking the light, you're actually closing a circle. So you're creating something. Melacha means to create something new. If I have the tables here and I'm breaking from a point A to point B, I didn't create anything new. The table were there all the time, or the chairs, or the, or the tablecloth, or the food. It's there, I'm just, just putting in point A, point B, point C. No problem. But when there's no light, and you're creating light, nevertheless it's easy, it's um, uh, prohibited, it's not allowed on Shabbat. It's just a very small uh, example. Okay? So... Um, how is got this thing get to do with anything? Some of the things I'm going to speak today, you got to be mature about it, because this is the halacha, and we have to learn if this is the right thing to do. Baruch atu Adonai, Eloheinu Malachu Alom, Shehakol Nihiyo Bivoro. Okay. Um, Gozez, Shearing, Siman Shin Mem. This is part 340 in the Shulchan Aruch. Uh, we are on page 195 here in the book. It is forbidden to cut person's hair or nail on Shabbat, whether with a tool or by hand, or even to bite it off. Uh, it is equally forbidden to cut someone else's hair or nails and to cut one's own. If someone cuts two hairs off with a tool, he is guilty of capital offense, offense of desecrating Shabbat. But if he does does so by hand, 
he has performed an act forbidden by only by our stage. It's still forbidden, but punishment is less. Likewise, if someone cuts or plucks a single hair from um, for himself or from someone else, he is guilty of an act of forbidden only by our sages. He is not guilty of an act forbidden by the Torah. So the measurement, the rabbi put measurement. How many hairs am I guilty? Two hairs. Ting, ting. So I can demonstrate with my hands. But imagine that I have hair. Okay? So here in the beard. What about me doing this on Shabbat? I will have a long hair. go like that. They might take hair out. Mm-hmm. Otro goes like that. Well, if you do it, by the way, if you do it on covered places in your body, first of all, you have to wash your hands. So anytime you scratch under the kippah, the yarmulke, or in any other covered area in your body, like armpits, so forth and so on, you have to wash your hands. There's a tumah there. I will see what if I do it accidentally. Some people do it the whole the whole week. They have beers, okay? Do it the whole week. They don't they don't pay attention to it. They might. Uh, by the way, brushing your hair. Can you brush your hair? Sometimes you see people goes on Shabbat, just got off the shower or whatever, and 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 the the hair is well organized, and you see that they brush them. This is forbidden on Shabbat, just so you know, okay? Men and women are equal here. Women leave Shabbat. You know, from home, go to whatever the shul. For example, you see the hair that is very uh, settled and very it's fixed. This is a big problem. So there are some tricks that we learn. We're going to teach today, but it's not a shame. It will help you, on one hand, look good. On the other hand, keep Shabbat completely. Okay? Um... Someone who uh, plucks even one white hair from an area of black hair, however, is guilty of the capital act of Shabbat desecration according to the Torah. Okay? Um, when someone performs an act of melacha that is less than the amount of an act of capital Shabbat desecration, he is guilty only of performing an act forbidden by our searches. So there's something, sometimes you do something, oh, oh, to tell this is from the Torah. This is forbidden. So I say, no, this is from the Rabbanan. It's a rabbinical. Oh, what's the difference? This is forbidden. This is forbidden. You hear it all the time, probably. Uh, um, it means that the consequences or, or the punishment is less. If it's from the Torah, it's more severe. So Rabbanan, it's less. It's still forbidden. Okay, so sometimes you can be lenient when it's, it's, it's a rabbinical law. Because rabbi, the rabbis put fence, so you won't hit the main area, the main fence. So sometimes we can be flexible in order to maintain life. Okay, so this is something for all of us to, uh, to know. Now, it is permissible to wipe one's nose clean on Shabbat, even if the mucus has dried in the nostrils. Nostrils, right? Is that right? Nostrils. nostrils. It does not matter that one might pull out some hairs from the nose, since this is not an, the intention of the person wiping his nose clean. Even if there is no doubt um, by, um, that by cleaning out the mucus, one will remove some hair and it is uh, a psikreshe, it is permissive, permitted. Psikrash means it's going to happen for sure. Some people go to the kids and they want to wipe their nose. They do it sometimes hard and they make the nose bleed. Or there's cut there because it was dry. Sometimes they get some scratch, scratch there. You clean the nose with the, the kids and you see all of a sudden that the clinic has some blood on it. So don't worry about it. That was definitely not your intention. You just have to be careful. Okay, In general, not only on Shabbat. Since plucking out hairs by hand is prohibited only by our sages, and he had no desire um, to perform the malacha of plucking out the hairs. This is the principle of psikreshe delonichele mitrabonan, which is permitted. That's going to happen anyway when you pull someone, you know, the kids uh, the boogers, it's dry, and you poke it out, you're going to be uh, beside the kids screaming. Um, you know, it's going to 
maybe some blood, maybe come out, maybe some air. Don't worry about it. It's part of the process, and you don't. You, it's not your. It's not your intention. Your intention is to clean his nose or your nose, not to make cuts or to pull out air. Uh, any questions? It's clear. Okay. Now a question that I got the other day, and you know, be surprised. Is we have it here on the halacha. Someone asked me the other day, Rabbi, you know, when someone goes to the restrooms, he needs to clean up himself, to wipe himself. It's going to be the same thing with the nose. You might take some airs or whatever. Sometimes people have MRIs, right, and they, they're bleeding. Uh, what, what, what to do? First of all, I highly recommend it. I have it at home in all, in all toilets, and I have it here in Israel too, in my parents' house. We install something called bidet. Bidet is highly recommended, not only for hygiene, is um, not only for Allah, also for hygiene. Bidet is, uh, we have it in the shul, in the synagogue. We put the bidet that you can wash yourself after you finish using the toilet. Okay? It used to be many, I think it was invented many, many years ago in French, and it was also only for women, but then it was, everybody used it right now. And this is the best way, highly recommended by many rabbis. This is how you can go to the Bet Knesset, to the shul, or, or in prayers, when your, body, when your body is you know, 100% clean. It's like a mini shower that you take for yourself. Some people, not many people don't use it. So what they do, they're still unclean. And there's a question raised now, if I can do tefillah, can I put tefillin, can I put talit, I can go to the Bet Knesset like that when I'm not clean. So... If you can install that, it's it's like I don't know thirty forty dollars maybe less than that, and you can install it yourself. It's called bidet. You put it on your toilet, and you're gonna feel clean. I'm telling you, guaranteed. As soon as you start to use it, you're gonna use it all the time. You won't be able to do what you usually did. It's gonna be hard for you because you you'll feel not clean. Okay. So what do you do on Shabbat? After using the restroom on Shabbat, a person may wipe himself clean even with water. It does not matter if he may... Uh, inadvertently. I always get... Inadvertently. I always get confused with this word. Pluck out some anal hairs. Okay. Um, the reason for this is the same as the reason for permitting one to wipe one's nose clean in the halacha above. Okay, let me just summarize it. It's long here. So if someone has beards and, and, and they have long hairs, you can also put some water. You can do this. And you want to clean your beard. You don't want to go to the bed or outside of your house. And you look uh, like a shmate, right? So you may do that, and no problem. You just do it gently. You can fix your hair with your hand. No use brush, because brush will take airs out. Only on Shabbat, Yom Tov. Okay. Now, question. A child, a child, started to complain during Shabbat that his head is itchy. As a parent, you always suspect that there is lice. lice. Daddy, I don't want any to be scratching. I said, it's been like this for a few days, I noticed. Can I remove lice from the child on Shabbat? What about girls that have long hair? Long hair. So the halacha says, it is permissible to pick out dirt or lice from a children's head on Shabbat, even if the child has uh, long hair. And it is likely that one will pull out some hairs uh, while removing the filth. It is permitted. As explained above, women may remove the lice anyway, since removing hair by hand is forbidden only by our sages, and she has no intention to pull out any hair. Even if we would consider this to be a case of psik reshe. It's going to happen anyway when you move the lice. It's going to happen. This is a psik reshe. It's not with your intention. Which is permitted. Okay? Aaron is calling. Although some Poskin wrote that, we 
should be careful not to uh, ditch any hairs. B bottom line, do it, but be gentle. Be careful. Okay? Now, what about using this, I don't know, I forgot the name of it, the special uh, tool that to, to take the lice, you know, it's like a hairbrush. A comb. It's very, very uh, thin and very made out of metal, right? Yeah. So, the Allah says <clears throat> that on Shabbat you can't use it. You can use your hand. But this tool can be used only after Shabbat. Because with this one you definitely take hairs out. Okay, um, you can do the same thing. Um, it's permissible to pick lice, uh, dirt off a uh, fox uh, fur garment, coat, stuff like that. You can do that on Shabbat, even if you take out uh, some. It's not your attention. Your attention is to clean, not to take the hairs. Right? Questions. Good. Now it's a very common question. People ask on Shabbat. People have bandages. And they want to remove it. It's bothering them. Or you want to replace, to change uh, for a fresh bandage. And obviously, you will uh, remove some hair also. It is forbidden or prohibited or uh, permitted. Well, Allah says that it is permissible, it's okay, to remove a bandage from one's skin on Shabbat if it is necessary. Even if it is uh, stitched to a hairy part of the body and removing the bandage, it will pull out some hair, some hairs. Um, as it, uh, in the previous halachot, this is permitted because it is it's not his intention which is permitted. You want to remove the bandage. You don't want to take airs, right? You don't go right now. And, okay, so. Now, using um, combined hair, a brush, uh, using a, a brush on your back to brush your hair. Is another name for it? A comb? A comb? Right. Okay, a comb or a brush. Mm -hmm. Our sages forbade an act of combing hair on Shabbat since this will uh, surely pull some hairs out. However, one may uh, strengthen one's hair with a soft brush. You know the baby's soft brush? Mm -hmm. The small one with the soft hair? Mm -hmm. it's, it's permitted. Okay, because this one does not pull out hairs. Hairs. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Ma? What's that said, babies? Okay, I, I didn't see base, I didn't see uh, adults that using it. Usually, it's for babies. Mm -hmm. But if it helps, I have zero. Okay, so if it's similar to it and it's soft, I guess it's yeah. fine. Many Pusky have complained uh, bitterly about those people who continue to comb their hair on Shabbat as if it were perfectly acceptable and permitted. They were aghast at the sight of people who desecrate Shabbat deliberately. Every rabbi must stress to his community to the importance of this halacha so that they will come to understand and obey it. You remember what I told you before? Sometimes you see in the synagogue People comes that the hair is very fixed, you know, definitely to use comb or, or a brush, and this is forbidden on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Another question, very interesting question, a little bit disgusting, but it happens, you know. Sometimes you eat, you eat chicken, and the chicken it was not, it has some uh, feathers, it's feathers, right? That were not removed. Can I remove that in order to eat on Shabbat? So, 
The halacha says, halacha says that, um, where it is? Okay, it is permissible to remove the small feathers that it's okay to do it. One might find on a piece of cooked chicken when eating it on Shabbat. Uh, there is no problem with that. Uh, what about Israeli soldier that he is serving in Israel? A Jew that's serving in an American or a non-Jew army. There is an order right now in the morning, 8 o'clock, everybody must be shaved. Now, it's Shabbat. On the other hand, he's under strict rules. He must come to the meeting shaved. What he can do? Any ideas? It's Shabbat already. They heard that after Shabbat is in. Um, a soldier of a non-Jewish army is ordered to shave his beard on Shabbat because of an important uh, dignitary is arriving and it is impossible to refuse the order. He should have a non-Jew shave him even if the non-Jew will use razor, razor blade rather than shave himself with a cream. Okay? There's a special cream that they used many years ago, and I think they use it today even. Shaving cream. In many days, it's called Mish'i. Mish'i, it's, it, it stinks like rotten eggs. But they put it, it gets dry, and then you, you scratch it, and it's, it breaks. Yeah. Yeah, so many use this today. They're taking what a woman used for their own use, and they put it on their face, and it works. It works. Uh, use, doing that, it's best because the halacha not permit to shave very close to the skin. It's a very big problem. If someone shave with a razor blade, cut the shave, he is like eating, he like eat it five times pork, no less than that. For example, someone that shave his skin, he has five spots that when you shave it, it's considered you ate five times pork, chazir. Every time, every place you have a bone, one, two, three, four, five. Here is permitted. You may use a razor blade. We don't use it at all, but what we do, we're using a special uh, machine, how you call it? Um, you know, the, the Nurel code, the, the Philips one. What? The shaving machine, electric machine. Some of them are not permitted because they're cutting so close to the skin, it's as if you use a razor blade. And this is halacha from the Torah. It says, Betar lo ta'aviru al besachem. Should not trim your beard with a Women's are permitted, forbidden for men only. Okay, girls, so you can continue. Wait, uh, face, face. Oh. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes. Uh, could you get a goy to shave you? If I have a goy to shave where? Uh, during the week? On Shabbat, only if you are, only if you are <clears throat> in a non-Jewish army, and this is a must. Question, Hannah. Every army, yes, every army has someone we can shame. Get this connected. The errands keep going. Okay. Okay. Very interesting halacha. Um, now, it's a problem. There's a problem that happens many times. Sometimes I hear it for uh, my wife when she share the idea. Of course, she doesn't mention names, but there is uh, every woman has to do tevila. She must 
emerge to a mikveh. Sometimes it happens on Shabbat, Friday night. So, Baruch Hashem, my wife, uh, Rabbi Delia, has this chut to be the balanit in the mikveh. Okay? Now, the halacha says that a woman has to be completely clean before she emerged to the mikveh. So the woman take a shower and she brush her hair and she clean every spot. And she have to trim the fingernails, everything. And then in Israel they do that. I don't know why in America they don't like to do it. But in Israel, the balanit, balanit is the woman that in charge in the mikveh. Before anybody emerged in the mikveh, she check her, she will check her completely um, from head to toe to see there is no bandages, there is no even a line of hair that's left there, and she cleaned completely. Then the tvila dipping in the mikveh will be 100% good, no questions. So a case arrived that Shabbat is already in, and she forgot to trim her fingernail. Or she still have polish. Now she must dip in the mikveh. She must dip in the mikveh. But on the other hand, she didn't take care of it. Usually you take acetone mm -hmm. and remove it. It's called a nail remover remover. Okay? Polish remover? No, you take care of it. Sometimes they didn't do it. Some woman has the artificial fingernail. So what the Allah has to say about that? Shabbat is in, in the mikveh, and the balanit has to make a decision whether to let her dip herself or tell her, come back on Sunday or Saturday night. Because we know it's very, very important that the woman will dip herself in the mikveh that night for a variety of reasons. First of all, this is the time to do it. Secondly, some of them will go home and just say, yes, I did my say I don't want to get in trouble with the husband. Someone said, okay, if you don't want me, I won't do it. And they do a grave sin. They'll be with their husband as they are still nida. So what do you do here? In the one hand, you can't trim your fingernail. On the other hand, you want to let her dip in the mikveh. Is that, that case understood? Okay. So the Allah says, if a woman needs to immerse herself in the mikveh on Friday evening, but she forgot to cut her nails before Shabbat began. She may instruct a non-Jewish woman to cut them on Shabbat. So, answering your question, you may instruct. Remember, it says with the shaving also. The act of cutting nails for the sake of the mitzvah, of emerging uh, in a mikveh, is forbidden only by our sages. So here you have a mitzvah from the Torah mikveh. Here, the rabbi says, hey, you're not supposed to cut your fingernails. Torah, rabbis, so the Torah take precedence. Precedence, right? And instructing the non-Jew to perform a lacha is also forbidden only by our sages. Thus, this is a case of shvut de shvut bemkom mitzvah, which is permitted. Okay? It's always better to ask a non-Jew to ask another Jew. Yeah, can you ask your wife to do this? Can you ask your husband? Can you ask your friend? Okay. I don't know if they have available non Jew in every mikveh. Right. But they have to they have to be creative. Now, listen to this. There is no, there is none. You can't find any non Jew that can help here. So technically the woman does not sin even if she stretches out her fingers to make her nails available to the non-Jew who is cutting them. Assisting the non-Jew in this manner does not make the Jew a partner in an act of melacha. As an act of uh, piety, however, it is better that this woman instruct the non-Jewish woman to pull the fingers forward and not offer her fingers herself. See how the Allah is very uh, you know, picky about it. So remember, this is Shabbat. I don't think it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Okay? If a non-Jewish woman is not available, um, the Jewish woman may immerse herself without cutting her nails as long as she cleans thoroughly 
um, under the nails so that there is no dirt at all. The opinion of the great majority of poskim is that the nails itself is not considered something that blocks the mikveh water from touching any part of the woman's body. The dirt itself that might be under the nail is what blocks the water and uh, invalidates the immersion. Therefore, once she has cleaned out all the dirt, she may immerse herself in this case, since there is no non-Jew to cut her nails. It's a special case. Here to understand, there is a, a great, great teaching on the esoteric level, on the Kabbalah, about the Mikra. Many people don't understand that. How water in the mikveh is better than my shower or my pool in my house, in the backyard. How does that make me kosher to my husband or taking me from a status of being nida to mea to tehorah, to be pure for impurity? There is a lot, it's not the time and place to talk about it, but the numbers of 40, uh, why 40 and what's the combination and water from rain or attached to the ground and all this, this is for a special zero by itself. You can just finish by saying that it's a mitzvah from the Torah that Hashem commanded us for a nida to emerge in the mikveh and only for that reason we should follow even if we don't understand like for example kosher food why we have to eat why we have to eat kosher the Torah doesn't give me a reason health reason non-Jews eat non-kosher and they're healthy Sometimes a healthier than a Jew. This is, in Jewish life, we have things that they are on the physical level and the spiritual. It has to be together. And what you eat affects your spirituality. What you do with the special water and the mikveh affects you completely. This is why you have to take new utensils that you buy, a pot, or cups, or plates, or whatever, made out of glass or metal, to immerse in the mikveh if it was not made by a Jew. To take it from the ownership of the non-Jew to a Jew. It's taken it from one world to another. We're not saying that the non-Jew are bad. That's not at all. Many, they, they, are, they are good. They have their mission in this world. I have my mission in this world. Just taking things from what belongs to them and bring it spiritual, spiritually to my possession. Okay? Um, this is why we have to uh, do Tvilat Kelim, and Bezal Hashem, it's part of what I'm planning to do, to teach this, and Bezal Hashem, Frashat Chala, all these halachot that connected to it, um, Bezal Hashem will get it. We'll get it. We have only once a week, four times a month, you know, whatever we can do. And soon, we have to talk about Hanukkah. Mm. Just finished Rosh Hashanah, we are Hanukkah already. Can you imagine that? Okay, I think we are going to finish right here, right now, with this halacha. Um, I um, want to uh, dedicate this shiur also to Zehava Gabai, Refuah Shalema, Refuah Tanefesh, Refuah Taguf. Uh, may we uh, hear good news. Also on Rav uh, Arye Yisrael ben Chan Sarachel. And whoever you want to mention their name. Um, will be for a Ashelema, speedy recovery soon for all of them. Uh, we continue our next second part of the class in Musar, or Chot Tzedikim, in less than five minutes. Um, on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, I urge you to go there. And thank you for all those who are donating to keep this to our classes uh, going and running and God bless you all Shalom Shalom